NASA's James Webb Space Telescope is just weeks away from full operation, with its mirror segments perfectly aligned and scientific equipment undergoing calibration. Webb's in-depth science will begin soon, after the first observations are revealed this summer. The first year's research will include observations of two hot exoplanets, categorized as super-Earths due to their size and rocky composition. The lava-covered 55 Cancri E and the Eris LHS 3844b. Researchers will use these planets to train Webb's high-precision spectrographs to better comprehend the geologic variety of planets throughout the galaxy and the evolution of rocky planets like Earth. 55 Cancri E circles its sun-like star at a distance of fewer than 150 million miles, one-fifth of the distance between Mercury and the Sun, completing one cycle in less than 18 hours. The day side of the planet is supposed to be covered in lava oceans, due to the surface temperatures considerably beyond the melting threshold of ordinary rock-forming materials. Planets that orbit this close to their star are thought to be tidally locked, with one side always facing the star. As a result, the hottest place on the planet should be the one side that faces the star the most directly, and the quantity of heat coming from the day side should remain relatively consistent throughout time. However, this does not appear to be the case. NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope observations of 55 Cancri E reveal that the hottest zone is offset from the section that faces the star most directly, while the overall quantity of heat observed from the day side varies. One of the most important questions that scientists want to answer is, does 55 Cancri E have a thick atmosphere? One explanation for these observations is that the planet has a dynamic atmosphere that moves heat around. 55 Cancri E could have a thick atmosphere dominated by oxygen or nitrogen, explained by Ren Yu Hu of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, who leads a team that will use Webb's near-infrared camera, NearCam, and mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, to capture the thermal emission spectrum of the day side of the planet. If it has an atmosphere, Webb has the sensitivity and wavelength range to detect it and determine what it is made of, Hu added. However, another exciting theory is that the 55 Cancri E is not tidally locked. Instead, it might be like Mercury, revolving three times per two orbits, what's known as a 3 to 2 resonance. As a result, there would be a day-night cycle on the planet. James Webb's NearCam will be used to measure the heat radiated from the illuminated side of 55 Cancri E during four distinct orbits. If the planet has a 3 to 2 resonance, they will study each hemisphere twice and should be able to identify any differences. In this scenario, the surface would heat up, melt, and even vaporize during the day, forming a very thin atmosphere that Webb could detect. In the evening, the vapor would cool and condense to form droplets of lava that would rain back to the surface turning solid again as night falls. These observations will be conducted as part of Webb's Cycle 1, General Observers Program. General Observers programs were competitively selected using a dual anonymous review system, the same system used to allocate time on Hubble. If you want to learn more about the James Webb Space Telescope and stay up to date, subscribe to the channel to receive our daily updates. Thanks for watching.